G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for episode number three of my Acid Retaliation Sentinel, currently leveling as a Driggs Evil Eye Occultist. Um, we've got some changes to make. So last episode I made a few boo-boos that I'll go over here in a minute, um, but there's a couple of things I need to change. This is the level 33, um, not POB, that's the wrong building, this is a Grim Tools. Uh, for Arcade Life's uh, Driggs Evil Eye Occultist leveling plan. And this is very similar to what I'm going to be doing. Now, there's a few things in here that will be different. We have the same offhand. Uh, I'll be going for the Ronopraxis Sting as well. I'm not going to be getting Crimson's Vile Scepter, although if you wanted to continue playing Driggs Evil Eye after this, I would strongly recommend getting one. Um, actually, if you're going to continue playing Driggs Evil Eye past about 40, I would recommend checking out Arcade Life stuff and just following his guide because it works pretty well. Um, all the rest of this stuff here is just going to be random until we find the items that we need. There will be a plus one to occultist skills belt uh, from, I think, the Rovers. And then later on, we'll be getting the Gargoyle belt from, oddly enough, Gargoyles in Forgotten Gods. And that will be plus one to Oathkeeper, but um, that'll be towards the end of normal difficulty. We'll be doing a Basilisk Fang on here, um, and then I'll, I'll go over the gear in a second. I've, I've made up a, a dummy character, uh, but I just wanted to point out the devotions mostly on this build. This is what Arcade Life is expecting to have by level 33, and it's kind of similar to what I was planning. There's a few little differences. Um, I'm not going to take the wretch, but um, this is what Arcade Life's taken, and and this is what there we go. This is what I'm going to be taking. So we've already got the rat, and I believe I ended up going with the hawk. I'm going to take those points out, and we're going to put them into the fox. Now I said incorrectly last episode that there was no point taking the fox now because we weren't going to get the weapon damage on the offhand. Well. Um, we did actually end up getting the offhand, so this one here. So we do have weapon damage on Driggs Evil Eye. Uh, but also, it just it it comes with weapon damage on Blood Burst here. Um, if you watch the previous episode again, you'll see me checking these, looking for the weapon damage, and I just didn't see it on there. So I knew in my head that it was there, I just couldn't find it, and so uh, I made that particular mistake right there. Um, so we're going to be starting with... The rat, which we already have. Then we'll be going into the fox, and this is where I am at the end of Act 1. So we'll be finishing the fox at the start of Act 2, and then we'll be jumping into the uh, Sailor's Guide up here. This will give us the blue, the red, the green that we need for Murma. Uh, I'm going straight for Murma, so we can get that leveling as soon as possible. And then after that, conveniently, the Manticore lights up, which is our other source of uh, reduced targets resistances. So this one, on any build you make, you're going to want your uh, minus whatever percent to whatever resistance that you want to shred. And you're also going to want either the Manticore, the Revenant, the Scales of Old Karma, or if you're doing Elemental, the Rowan's Crown. One of those. And you want those on every build because it's a massive multiplier for your damage. Uh, so we'll be taking the Manticore here. And then after the Manticore, we'll be getting the Tortoise. I like having a Circuit Breaker on Hardcore. And around about here, this is what, 32 points. So this will be sort of towards the end of uh, Act 3, Act 4. Um, maybe even a little bit further than that. But... This is kind of what we can expect for normal difficulty. Maybe a little bit further. So I'll be taking the toad and we'll be removing the fox. Then we'll be filling out affliction down here for retaliation stuff. Then up the top here, we're taking messenger of war. Now, someone mentioned in the comments in, I believe in episode two, that you shouldn't take the messenger of war. It's a noob trap or something to that effect. And I've looked at it and I, I can't really help but disagree. That is a ton of fire retaliation, both flat and also percentage. And then percentage, all retaliation, 
you've got slew resistance, you've got movement speed. Down here, you've got more flat fire retaliation. Uh, move speed again, more retaliation stuff, even more flat retaliation. You've got armor on there. This just seems like the perfect devotion, and we will be converting all of that fire retaliation to acid on our uh, Aegis of Menhir. Is it Aegis Menhir? No, it's this one. Hang on. This here, it is Aegis of Menhir. We'll be converting fire damage to acid damage, which I believe applies to the retaliation effect um, because it's all retaliation damage added onto this, and then all the fire damage should be converted. I believe that's how it works. If I'm wrong, go ahead and yell at me in the comments, but uh, I believe that's how it works. Regardless, this is, this is a lot of flat fire retaliation, so even if we're not converting it, it's still good in my mind. And then from there, we will be taking, uh, I think it's going to be, yep, the Phoenix next. Now, this build doesn't have a huge amount of healing baked into it, so I will be going for the Grove on the Amulet again. And also, we are getting a lot of absorption here. So we've got 188 at max level on the Phoenix. Then we'll be ripping the points out of the Toad and the Rat. We'll be coming up here. We need the, um, the Scarab and the stag here just for colors and that'll let us get well ripping out the uh the sailor's guide there all the points out of the crossroads then we'll be taking the shield maiden uh this is a lot of shield stuff a lot of retaliation stuff on this so this is kind of a, a shield slash retaliation kind of node and then we'll be getting obelisk of men here as our last one and this block here again is 400 damage absorbed. This is up, I won't say all of the time, but it's up a lot of the time. Um, so we'll be getting a lot of absorption. We'll also be looking at four and a half thousand armor, which is just crazy good. I don't even really care that the armor absorption is not quite 100%. Um, I, can, I can afford to let 3% of attacks through. Um, with that amount of armor, even the huge attacks are only going to be getting a little bit through. Um, we'll see how we go with the um, with the absorption. Um, we can always swap in a a scaled hide. Where is it? A scaled hide instead of the ancient armor plate here. But um, I like I just like the fact that this has crazy good um, armor absorption. Also, uh, looking at the resistances here. All of this stuff here, with the exception of the Perdition set, of which there are five pieces, all of this is target farmable. The Creeping Ring here, we're going to shop that from a merchant. We're just going to go and farm it. Um, there is also a, uh, a boss monster, uh, Silvaria, who you can go and farm if you prefer to be fighting stuff instead of resetting merchants. And she will drop one of these about every one in three kills. Ronopraxis Sting is a, an MI that comes from a boss. She will drop one every time you kill her. Um, Basilisk Fang, again, I believe this is sold in the same shop as these rings, so that'll be Vinylton. And then the Gargoyle Girdle, I think, is going to be the only one that may be a little bit challenging to get. I don't think this is available from a merchant. Again, if I'm wrong here, yell at me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure we're just going to have to go and kill a bunch of Gargoyles which you can find mostly in the last area in Forgotten Gods. You can also get a couple from various shrines and um, totems in Forgotten Gods areas, but probably that's going to come from the last area in Forgotten Gods. Ravna's Claw is the insect queen at the bottom of the hive out in the croplands near Homestead, so you'll get that the first time you kill her. Most of this stuff is either bought straight from a shop or you can um, get it the first time you kill the monster it drops from. So if you've farmed the offhand like I did at the end of last episode, then you've only really got one or two more things to do. Um, also, these resistances here, these are with no affixes at all on any of the greens here. This, this is a white item. So if you happen to find, uh, for example, the Vile Scorn boots, well, that's your Aether and Chaos 100% fixed. And then all you need is two prismatic prefixes on any one of these, um, what, six 
different rare items, and your resistance is a fixed. Um, if you happen to get the right blueprint for it, there's also a belt here, um, Sash of the Immortal Sage, which I stole this idea from Wrecked by Protoss, but this has got 120% elemental resistance on it. It is one of the rarer blueprints from my experience, but um, if you happen to get it, there's your elemental problem solved, there's your aether and chaos resistances solved, and then you just fill in whatever else you need, whatever you feel like. Um, offensive ability is a little bit low at the moment, so maybe you want to get some aggressive or of readiness affixes on a lot of this stuff, but um, this is all going to be very easy to fix. So that's the plan. Let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game. And like I said, we've got a little bit of respecking to do. Sorry for the black screen there. Um, we're going to go and rip those points out of the hawk. So two points out of there. And we are going to take the fox. So there we go. You should have four points in the rat. Two points in the fox, and uh, you probably could, not probably, you definitely can reclaim that if you want to. We may end up putting it back later on, but, you know, get a little bit further on. Okay, uh, looks like I didn't really clean up my inventory after the last episode, but that's fine. This is the Global Toxic Effigy that I went and farmed. It took me, I think, three clears of the area. If you haven't got one, don't stress about it. Just go to Duncan and make yourself the Occult Horn. Okay, it's it's not quite as good, it's not got perfect bonuses, but we're only going to be using this until we find the Perdition shield later anyway. It's just a little bit of armor for now. Uh, right, with that said, let's go and get on with Act 2. Um, we're also going to poke our head into the Forgotten Gods area, uh, because I really hate running around without a movement ability on button number one, so that's what I'm going to go and get. So here we go. Uh, you require me. Very well. Go through the portal. Now when it comes to picking your side, uh, you go ahead and pick whoever you want. Also, there's a, a nice little secret path here. You can come up the side and grab these items. You're going to get your very first purple item, which I'm going to sell. And then random rares from this and some bits and components. Uh, yes, whichever one of the, the three you want to join, you go right ahead. I do like Salel normally because I like the emblem of the charging bull here. This is basically Vyas Might, um, but you know, not as good, uh, but also no skill points required. So I like that one. The other option from uh, from Soleil is really bad. Uh, that's a disengage. You definitely don't want that. I'll go and have a look at the Drig one, because I am kind of leaning towards Drig uh, without knowing what they actually have. I think it's um, the Blitz clone. Not him. I want this one. So Riftstalker, that's the teleport. You don't want this one. It's, I mean, it works, but I, I don't like it. Um, Emblem of Focused Rage. This is a shield one. Yeah, this is a Blitz clone. So if you like Blitz, you can grab this one. Dreg's gear is a lot of acid and poison, and, and honestly, we're not going to use any of it. Um, we will have the Perdition set by the time we could use this, and um, maybe even the Empowered Perdition before we could use any of this stuff. And it occupies the same uh, slots, so helmet, shoulders, and chest. We're going to have blues in all those. Um, we're not going to be using the Venom Seal. I mean, realistically, it doesn't matter which one of these you pick. So just pick the one that has the best movement skill that you like, uh, which means I'm going to be going with Soleil. But if you prefer Blitz, then you can go with Drig. And if you prefer um, Shadow Strike, then, uh, then you're going to want Bismil. Bismil also has much easier quest line as well. Uh, but here you have the Leaping Mantis, which is basically jump over there. And then um, the Emblem of the Shadowy Assassin is a um, 
Shadow Strike clone. So whichever one you want. I'm going to pick Salel, but it doesn't really matter. You're going to get Max Faction with all of them anyway. And of course, I didn't talk to the uh, Emissary while I was busy waffling. So I've got to go back up here and talk to him. Also, one, two, three, four, five, six chunks of free XP. And we are leveling up now. So one, two, and I'm going to put a couple more points into Blood of Drig. Apparently I had some uh, some levels left over. Okay, and we'll put, I think, just one for now in here. And usually I go up to about five-ish, but I think eight was some sort of break point there. So we'll go six plus two. And that'll honestly, that's that's 20% heal whenever you push the button. Uh, you also get some retaliation, some regen, some offensive ability. It's pretty good. So All right, let's pick up the actual quest here and go downstairs to do our little fight. The emissary warned yep, let's get it over with. Okay, everybody's dead. And everybody's dead. Okay, for these ones, you may have to run around in circles a little bit. But if you just keep them cursed... And that might actually be a one-shot. Is that going to be a one-shot? Not quite. Very, very close, though. There we go. Two-shot. There's another piece of the Explorer set for me, so... Uh, do I wear that? I think I do. Uh, that's a pretty big downgrade in terms of armor. However, I do like the resistances more. Um, I think I am going to wear that. Don't stress if you don't have blue items. Generally speaking, uh, blue items are often not as good as green. And uh, you can make do without them, no problem at all. Okay. That's as far as you need to go. So once you've done the, the fight in the middle, you can pick whichever faction you want. Uh, once you've once you've pledged yourself to one of the three, don't bother picking up the next quest. We'll do them later. Uh, yes, I will work with you. Okay, as soon as you get here, friendly with one of the cults, close that. Stop talking to everybody. You'll end up with a quest in your log, and if you're anything like me, it'll drive you absolutely batty for the entire rest of normal difficulty until you get here to do it. Right, uh, like I said, I like the emblem of the charging bull. You can pick whichever movement skill you like. Go ahead and chuck it on your uh, metal, and then we can uh, we can be on our way. So uh, back to Act One. Actually, I should have banked all that. Let me let me just go do that. So you will get access to all of the movement runes fairly quickly. Um, so don't worry about it if you want to try different ones. Just Honestly, just go with whatever. It's it's going to be fine. There we go. Back to Devil's Crossing. Let's grab that scaled hide to put back on my fancy new chest piece. Keep the add-on. Yes, I'm sure. There we go. Also, all your points and cunning. At least until about 50 points. We will need some cunning. Uh, so I will actually put... Five points in cunning before level 30 odd. Uh, Ravna's claw does indeed require cunning to use, so we will need some of it. Uh, or you can get your cunning from an item. But just be aware that if you do use an item for your cunning, then um, you won't be able to take that item off. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we kill these idiots. Keep an eye on your health with this build. It's not particularly sturdy until later on. So definitely, if you notice your health getting low, don't be afraid to just run around in circles. Even if you're not attacking anything, just keeping on the move will allow you to dodge a lot of attacks. All these melee idiots who are running around doing absolutely nothing because I'm kiting them. I mean, they're literally doing zero damage while I'm running around. It's only when I stop that I start standing in the fires, I start getting hit by a lot of the ranged people. You know what? You can have one all for yourself, just so as that guy will shut up. Yeah, if you start getting low, first thing you need to do is move. 
Don't forget to grab the chest in here. Squire's handguards are quite good as well. If you've got enough crafting gear or crafting components early on, well, there you go, there's your cunning. Some offensive ability, attack shield, or attack speed and shield damage blocked. You'll get that lightning nova when you block, um, which you can't do with a caster offhand, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay, that's a ton of armor and nothing else that I like. <laughs> but it is a ton of armor. Um, I'm going to wear those. Ideally, I should have banked those. Ideally, I would like the run speed. But um, yeah, I'll survive without the run speed for a bit more armor. We don't have a huge amount of sustain on this build at the moment. It's basically Blood of Dregs, 20% heal, and then the potion. So anything more than that is uh, going to have to wait until about level 28. The good news with this build compared to the other builds that I recommend farming an Amulet of the Grove with is that uh, you don't have to worry about what level you get to where you're going to farm it with. Um, if you somehow manage to get to level 28 before you get to Ronaprax, uh, I'm not even mad, I'm actually impressed. Um, I will be very, very surprised. If you manage to do that, you're spending way too long in Act 1. Okay, what have we got? We've got a bit of better resistances on this and also some stats, so I'm going to swap that in. Uh, also, something to consider. We are done with Act 1 now, which means we have done all of the, well, the big crafting we needed to do at the start. So you can turn magic items off if you want. Uh, I'm certainly going to, and I'm actually going to empty my inventory of all of those. And then I never see yellow items ever again. So we'll come into this cave here. We're here for the Devotion Shrine, which is somewhat hidden. So if you don't, if you don't know it's here, there's a pretty good chance you can walk straight past it. Um, let's see if we can't one-shot all three of them. Just gonna go wait over here. One down, two down, three down. <laughs> So yeah, there's there's actually a pretty good chance that a lot of you are going to get to the point where I'm saying things like, okay, and now we spend a day and a half farming the Perdition set. And uh, and you're just going to enjoy this one-shot build so much, you're going to want to continue doing it. So if you go back to, uh, to the first episode in this series, there will be a link to Arcade Life's channel and the starting 20 levels of his version of this character. If it turns out that you really, really like it, then... Uh, Go watch his series and just keep playing it, honestly. Like you, you we play games for fun. If you're not having fun, then uh, then don't do it. Alright, we picked up a double rare here. Pretty good armor. Uh, some okay resistances, not amazing. Little bit of fire retaliation, which eh, I don't really care. And uh, honestly, overall, the difference is not enough for me to want to change anything, so I'm going to leave that as is. I will say that if you are going to continue this one-shot build with uh, Arcade Life's video, don't take the Oathkeeper class when I do, because he ends up playing it as a uh, Warlock. So you will need... Um, you will need Arcanist as your second class. Alright, so I'm just making my way towards this, the uh, southern section of this little map here. There's a lot of ghosts to kill. Which is fine, but the one I'm looking for is Barris Radlith. And honestly, I'm only going to kill him because he's kind of there. Actually, I might not even kill him. I'm just here for the chest, realistically. So, you do get a guaranteed blue item out of this chest. Let's see if we can one-shot this guy. I think he'll probably need two, maybe even three. Uh, yeah, maybe even four. <laughs> But he's just going to tick down. Let's see if we can put a little bit more of a hurting on him. And down he goes. Okay, so he's got a shield and uh, a weapon of some description when you kill him. He'll probably drop those most times you kill him. And uh, we are otherwise done. Uh, those are my old boots. 
These boots are okay. The the lightning sphere is, I mean, honestly, it's damage early on, and I don't really care what type of damage I get. Although acid or poison is better, it's not overwhelmingly so at this point in the game. Um, so those probably are worth wearing. Right, um, I did my usual trick again here, and I didn't talk to. Um, not Isaiah, his partner. His name will come to me just before I mouse over it. Nope, I got nothing. Ah, it's Drew. Yes, Drew Larkin. Make sure you talk to Drew, um, preferably before you go into the cave so you don't have to backtrack like I did. But, um, I mean, the good news about the backtrack is I get to go over here and I get this little hidden chest and body with those really, really good items that I totally need. Um, these ones are not bad, actually, just looking at them. A little bit less armor, but the I think it's the heroism has got the 3% extra armor on there. That's alright. The, uh, the Blade Dancer's handguards are actually a really good upgrade in terms of armor. Um, and also the, the retaliation type proc when hit as well is, is not horrible. Uh, anyway... We're pretty much done here. Now, for this quest with Isaiah Redden and Drew Larkin, I like to help Isaiah Redden, and that requires you to take the top options here, and we will see him again later. Just to the north of him is a whole bunch of Aether Crystals, and uh, if, if you know me, then you know I love me some Aether Crystals. Uh, also, at the moment is a good time to be farming Aether Crystals if you want to go and do a quick run through the Warden's Laboratory to get a few more of them, then feel free. You will probably need somewhere like 40 to anywhere from 40 to up to about three or 400 of the things while leveling. So if you happen to get a few extras, it's probably a good thing. All right, we'll talk to Graven here. We'll agree to search for his Elder and we will, of course, agree to blow up the dynamite. Now, I didn't craft a relic because, uh, hang on, let's just go around the corner here so I can talk without them overhearing. I'm going to steal theirs. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you'll get a little bit more reputation with, with them and you'll have a different relic. Either is fine. Either will work. And we'll probably be getting a different one around level 35 to 40 when we start farming totems because we'll be getting a lot of recipes. All right, one shot entire pack of bees. Now these will start dropping you the... do I have one? I don't have one. These mutagenic icors, uh, they will start dropping from the bees, unless there was a change with patch 1.2 that I didn't notice. Um, but these should start dropping them. And you will definitely get one or two when we start farming Ronoprax as well. So we'll move through here. We've got to kill... Um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Is it, is it Nicholas Balthazar? I think. We've got to kill him. Which shouldn't be too much of a big deal. Uh, new armor? New armor? No. Okay. These I definitely have to wear. Uh, I'll be losing some resistances, even though, I mean, Chaos Res is not really something I care too much about yet. I will care more about that, uh, but for right now, I care about triple, almost, uh, slightly more than double, let's say, on the armor. Uh, also, while you're in here, if you can get three royal jellies, you're going to be laughing, because that's a quest coming up in the next camp that you're already done. And if you can't, well, we're going to be killing a lot of bees anyway. You'll be swimming in royal jelly for this playthrough. Okay, and I'm just going to um, destroy all of you guys in one, one cast. Okay, I think we can just stand here and blow this guy up, honestly. I may change my mind here in a second when he finally hits me properly, but, but I think it should be alright. Yep, there he goes. Okay, so we got the Bounty Hunter's Girdle, which is not horrible. Does have 5% extra XP and some total speed, so those are good things. 
And we've got the Ranger's Cask, which again is not bad, but it's got pretty good resistances on it, so consider wearing those. Uh, Balthazar's Crest here. Probably not. I mean, maybe, but the bonuses on it, the skill points, all that sort of stuff, they don't really apply to us. So, I mean, if you get a good drop, it may be better than the, uh, the standard whatever ribbon we've got. Just down to uh, what sort of a drop you got. Okay, I'm popping a potion there just to be a little bit safer. Doesn't honestly matter. Did I get my third one? I did not. Most of the time when you kill a, a hero type B, you should get one. Most of the time. Doesn't mean you always will, but should and most. Are the operative words there? There's my third one, so I'm all set, but we are going to go and kill Ronoprax anyway. There we go, so we went in there to get our dynamite. That's where we're going to put the dynamite and blow up that gate. However, there's a little bit of a detour here. Um, I'm going to continue not doing totems because I happen to know, because I'm making this series, that we're going to be doing a lot of totem farming around level 37, 38-ish. So I'm going to skip a lot of them for now. But feel free to do them if you wish. You're probably... Yeah, I'd, I'd say you're, you're probably fine to do even ancient totems. As long as you're careful, you're going to end up kiting a lot with this build because you do pitiful melee damage, basically. So you just run around in circles when you don't have this ready to go. Okay, as soon as you blow the gate up, we need to go back and we need to talk to these two. Now, like I said, I am going to be... Um, hang on, let me just hide behind this tree. I'm going to be stealing their relic. So I'm going to talk to Graven here and I'm going to say I found their elder and I didn't find any talisman. Sorry, wasn't there. Maybe one of the zombies has it. And I'm sorry for your loss, goodbye. And then I'm going to come over here and talk to Bernard. And Bernard's going to give us another backpack, which is definitely good. More storage space. And this is the relic that, um, I mean, it would have been there. If, if I'd found it, I would have given it to them. But, you know, I didn't find it. But this is just what I heard it has. 5% uh, to all of your stats, which is pretty good. So we're looking at about 15 for physique, maybe 16, 17 for spirit, and eh, maybe 13, 14 for cunning. Which is pretty good. Um, let's get some cunning on the way, actually. Uh, we will be needing cunning for our weapon coming up here, so make sure you've got some of that at least. Um, and then the other thing you get from this is minor infusion. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck that on button two. You can put this wherever you like. I'm going to forget to push the button all the damn time. <laughs> um... I'm also going to swap those pants over. Yes, I lost a heap of health, but I also gained a decent amount of armor. And the biggest part about these pants is that 4% increased armor is applied to every other slot. So these are actually really good. Um, give me my add-on back. There we go. So armor is definitely climbing, which is good. Uh, what do we got for a ring here? Now I'm using Veloth's ring, which is... Eh, it's okay. Um, poison and Acid is completely not a problem for this build. Because you have Blood of Dreeg, you're getting Acid Resistance. Uh, nope, not yet. So that comes with Aspect of the Guardian. Okay, so even without the Blood of Dreeg, we're already 54% over. So um, Veloth's ring, I don't need the Poison and Acid Res. I don't need the Aether Resistance just yet. The OA and DA is pretty nice. The acid damage is okay. I think I kind of want this ring instead, though. So I'm going to put that on. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm also going to swap over to Corpse Dust on these rings. And that'll get me a little bit more vitality. Also percent health and a little bit of regen. Now that regen... 
does work with this flat region, so we should have a couple hundred a second now. Okay. 1.3 is a couple. Um, let's go ahead and keep this ring as well. I'll put another one on there. This little swap doesn't really matter. Uh, if you want to keep polished emeralds for stats, then by all means do so. The extra health and a little bit of extra regen is just a nice to have. Right. Now I'm pretty sure I cleared my rift. Yep, I definitely did. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of running back to where I was. But if you're not silly like I am, then you should have... That's a lot of cunning. Uh, you should be able to rift back to where you were there. Instead of having to run. And we'll continue north. Now the next part of this little section here is going to be the beehive. So we will go and do the beehive. There's a queen to kill, there's royal jelly to collect, and also we will be collecting the amulet. Um, but at this point, there isn't a huge amount of use for that amulet. Um, assuming it's got the bonuses that I remember it having, which is completely possibly wrong. If it is, in fact, adding weapon damage and retaliation damage onto Drig's Evil Eye, then you can absolutely consider using it. If, however, it's like I think and it's adding that onto um, Aegis of Men here, then yes, it's not worth using just yet. But we'll make that decision when I, uh, when I have a look at it. And also, it's going to be down to what bonuses yours rolled with. Uh, the, the Putrid Necklace starts... Um, I think it's at level 32 when it swaps over to plus one to occultist skills. Uh, but because this is from considerably lower level, don't have the plus one to occultist skills just yet. As another royal jelly. You should come out of here with several royal jellies. Why are you still alive? Also, the poisonous bees are resistant to poison by the looks of it. Who knew? Alright, let's just uh, round up a nice little horde here. See if we can't get these guys as well. There we go. All the small ones die in one hit, which is very nice. And if we can get everybody else nice and grouped up, that should be all bar one. Nope, we got them all. Beautiful. Okay. Take these guys out as well. Now when you get to the Queen, the one thing you need to remember is stay in melee range. Uh, this is the Queen, Rona Prax. Make sure you stay in melee range. She has a poison shotgun type attack. If you run away, she will use it. And if you get hit by all of it, um, sayonara. Also remember the... Uh, Clicky, the activatable on your relic, is 100% bonus damage, so make sure you use that while you're busy poisoning things. And as long as you stay in melee range like this, she doesn't do a shotgun, and you should be fine. So if I start running away, is she going to do it first shot here? Nope. There it is. All that. If that hits you, it uh, it really hurts. But if you're staying in melee range, she doesn't use that attack, and so all you have to deal with is the uh, the fumble and a little bit of poison damage, which we have a lot of regeneration there. Okay, crushing of shadows. Uh, it is actually not bad. Okay, so it's both of them. <laughs> Weapon damage on e Drig's evil eye is not bad. Plus three to blood burst is also pretty good. Um, Pierce Resist Vitality. Okay, losing... Losing the Blood of Dreek bonuses kind of hurts. I won't lie. So I think I'm going to not use that amulet for now. We will be back later, around level 26, 27, maybe, maybe even 28. Uh, I'm gonna farm this little, uh... This little Bee Queen. Because I want a 
runner practice sting of the grove. I told you this was a farming build. We're going to be doing farming. And uh, that's going to be the next thing that I'm going to farm. I am going to recommend you to do it as well. Of course, I'm not your dad. You do as you like. But if you get one, that will be a very good amulet. And it should last you all the way to level 100. Um, you may want to farm another one later. That's up to you. But you won't have to. Okay, once we've come out of there, uh, if you don't have three royal jellies by this point, you're probably going to want to reset and do it again, because there is a quest in the next little village that uh, that needs three of them, and it's pretty good XP. Uh, what is this ring? Elemental resistance, ring of flames. All right, I am tempted by that ring of flames proc because of this amulet, elemental converted to acid. On Blood of Drieg. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna not use it because resistances, but it is tempting. <laughs> Just watch everyone dissolve in a big green puddle. Alright, I'm also going to try to remember to come back here after I kill Cronley and talk to those guys. So there's a decent chance I forget. Uh, if you want to go down there, you can bribe them, get a little bit of scrap some XP, uh, but if you wait for later, then, um, ooh, do I swap these? No. Uh, if you wait for later, then you don't have to bribe them, you just get the scrap for free. Okay. Uh, we've got to go back to Monet, talk to him. I believe if you talk to Monet, and if you gave them their relic back, then you should have enough rovers rep for all of the quests there. Okay, so he didn't actually give me Rover's Rep, which is unfortunate. <laughs> it means it is the Relic that gives you enough reputation for that. So I'm going to miss a quest here. If you didn't steal their Relic, if you crafted one instead, then you should have enough reputation to get the quest from Old Mate here. And that is the turn the um, turn in the Royal Jelly for a bunch of XP and a Blueprint. Right, we got the troll just up here. You'll see him on the map there. Golgoth the Rampaging. Alright, so I've snapshotted with this. I'm going to do it again right now. And he should be about half health. Maybe slightly higher than half health when that wears off. And we're going to drag him into the guards here so the guards can help us kill him. And as long as you dodge his big swings, you should be fine. Is he resetting? I don't think so. Yep, we'll just, uh, just keep running around. Keep him cursed up. Throw the eyeballs at him, and he's pretty much dead. There we go. Easy peasy. Alright, uh, yep, so I don't have enough reputation with them yet, unfortunately, uh, but that's fine. The other thing you could do if you want to, I, I'm not going to, but you could put a whole bunch of points in here and get more damage that way. Um, I think you're actually better off getting Aspect of the Guardian, at least a few points in this, and then getting Vile Eruption as well. This is basically going to fragment the eyeball, so when it lands, it splits off into other projectiles. Um, which is just more damage again, and then this is this is honestly the only defensive thing we're really going to have until we uh, swap to retaliation. So getting that damage reduction is fairly high priority, and it is also why I'm prioritizing armor so heavily on this run. On a lot of other runs, yes, I mentioned that armor is useful, but I don't normally swap out good affixes for minor armor upgrades like I have been this run. Okay, the Hanafi mine here, this area is 100% optional. You can skip this area, but I like getting the dynamite in here. And you can also find... is he down here? Nope. Uh, there's a boss that can spawn here. 
He will instead be a little bit further up to the north. And the incendiary casks are not horrible as far as helmets go. Come with chaos resistance as standard. Um, the explorer's cover does as well. So I'm going to keep my explorer's cover. But uh, if you find a really good incendiary cask, if you don't have the explorer's cover, they can be a really good option. Okay, we can just rain eyeballs down on them. The uh, the widow rat and um, an old mate should reset before they can manage to run the whole way around. I guess we'll see if they come running. Or well, they may show up back here. Or I'll get bored and I'll go find them. And yep, you guessed it, I got bored. Also, all through these mines, there's uh, a whole bunch of little secret areas which are always fun to click on. Can get some upgrades from them. Probably not going to, but you can do it. Alright, so we got the Whittle Rat here. Just gonna go ahead and beat him down. I've also got Hudson Fury. Okay, so that's another hero type in here. This is really good for Cronley rep, uh, for um, yeah, negative Cronley rep, but uh, positive Devil's Crossing rep, which is something I like. No, no, he, let me show you how it's done. <laughs> I see you down here shooting at me. Okay, he should die relatively easily. I'm gonna refresh this dot just before the relic wears off. So now he should more or less die from that dot. There we go, he's dead. I'll come back and collect him later. There's a mutagenic icor. Why do I get the feeling he's not actually dead? Uh, tick, tick, tick. Not quite. Now he's dead. So this little section here, uh, you can get dynamite from all of these. There's a guaranteed one on the floor here. So this is why I come through here. Guaranteed dynamite. I've had three or four from here. Also, apparently, you can get them from Halion. And then Halion's crest is not horrible. Um... This one, the Wraithbound prefix is kind of killing it for me. If it was something really good, like Corrosive or something like that, then it would be better. So I'm not going to use that, but maybe you'll get a good drop. Alright, and our next mission is to blow up the Bandit Forges. Now, on, for example, the Elementalist, I ran down here and I fought Wrecked by Protoss in the pit. I'm not doing that with this character. I don't think it's tanky enough. I don't think it has enough sustain. I'm pretty sure if I took this against Wrecked by Protoss' character or Acedian, um, I'm pretty sure this character dies. So I'm just not going to put my character into that situation. And instead, we're going to go beat up all these weak... Um, what do you call them? Cronley's gang? We're going to beat these guys up. Because they're more our size. Also, come in here, pop the secret hidden chest, because everybody loves hidden loot. The other thing as well is this is a level 5 weapon, so I'm seriously considering going and getting another one. And by seriously considering, what I mean is as soon as I get to the next rift gate, I'm going to get another one. Um, our damage does come at least partially from our weapon damage, so increasing that will help a lot. Uh, also, we could get higher level affixes as well, so that would be nice to have. Okay, once again, Grim Dawn just cannot handle platforms or upper floors or anything like that. It just doesn't work. Okay, nearly there. So a couple more uh, bandit forges here. There's also this guy. Ash the Wall Feral. Now, he's not always here. Sometimes it's a different hero. But there's always somebody here. I don't think I've ever been through this section and not had some sort of hero standing right here. So don't forget to kill him. And take his stuff. Squire Boots. Are they anything I'm interested in? Um, PS Chaos, Stun Duration, Move Speed, Health. They're not bad. They're actually not bad. Uh, what's the armor on them? 162. So they could actually be decent. 
Generally, I don't craft that sort of stuff while I'm leveling because I'd rather keep my crafting components and scrap and such for when I get to higher level. But they wouldn't be bad as like a, a stopgap sort of thing. Alright, there we go. You two get to live. Tell your friends. Alright, let's go kill Pusquil. I'm gonna grab the rift here. And then we're going to go kill Pusquil. I've been neglecting my weapon, and it's time to fix that. Also, as long as I'm having a look at gear, let's have a look at any other gear. Maybe there's, you know, my belt is probably decently out of date. Uh, coming up on, what, eight levels. That's fine. Armor, this is all fine. I think it's probably just the weapon. Uh, gloves, oh, level five, okay. Uh, right, so I want the lower crossing rift. Um, and actually, before we do that, Steven Skinner has a ring that I want. And I may actually use it. That's my piercing, 76, maybe not. <laughs> but hey, XP. Um, this ring is, is pretty good. Comes with piercing and elemental, and also health. It was the health and the piercing resist that I was interested in. However, I think I'm probably okay with that preserving ring. The Skinner Band is actually better. It's not hugely better though, so it's probably not a massive deal. And that's basically the same belt. <laughs> a little bit of chaos instead of the bleeding though. But honestly, I could use either of those. Um, I'm going to take Cunning up to 5 points. And uh, and just see how much I need when I get Ravna's Claw. I'm not going to stress if it takes a little bit longer to get um, the requirements to use Ravna's Claw. Because I'll have it around level sort of 29, 30-ish would be my usual guess. Um, and let's, let's actually do what I should have done before. And get some of these. So now we've got life steal on our eyeball. We've also got some bleeding damage, which is nice enough, I guess. And we're going to start working on Sailor's Guide here. So this is basic stats, some crowd control resistance. 10% move speed is very nice. And then some physical resistance there. So that is all good stuff. I'm really bad at spending points, obviously. And let's go kill us a Whittle Rat. You guys are too little, unfortunately. Uh, these cap out level 6. Actually, that's a point. What level does Pusquil cap out at? Level 10. Hopefully it's higher than level 10. Pretty sure he can spawn here as well. Don't quote me on that. I haven't farmed him very often. But uh, I know he lives up here as well. So in terms of the weapon, uh, what I want is basically just a higher level base. If I can get some poison related affixes on it, great. And if I can't, um, I don't think I care. But also, I may be out of luck here. Level 11. Eesh. I think I left this just long enough to get to the point where he can't actually drop a weapon. Nope, turns out I was wrong. Alright, well that's... I mean, it's better than what I'm wearing, so I'll take it. Um, do I want that? Nope. Do I want that? Also, no. Nope. Okay, how much better is this? Don't ever look at the plus damage per second section. That uh, That's all lies, so just ignore that. So Eldritch is basically worthless. And then Alacrity. I don't swing this very often, so that's also kind of not great. But it is slightly better, so we'll chuck that on. Let's head back to Devil's Crossing. We'll go ahead and melt the old one. Um, how are we doing for... Ooh, Mutagenic Icor is ready to go. Also, they are craftable if you have the components to make them. So that's going to be, I think, Mutagenic something. Yeah, um, Mutated Scales. 
I don't have any, unfortunately. It would make three of these, which would be perfect. Uh, but we have enough for one vitriolic gallstone. So this is acid and poison damage, percent acid and poison damage, and then it also applies an aura to you that gives you a ton of poison damage, a bunch of percent damage on it. This is really good. If you can get two of these to put one on your weapon, um, and I think you can put another one on your caster, can you? Shields and caster off hands. Yes, you can. So you can get another one on there. And between them, they'll give you 150, 200%, I think. Yeah, 200% acid damage, 200% poison damage, increased duration on your poison stuff. It, it's all really good stuff. You will pick these up mostly from the insects, but um, they also drop in containers as well. You, you'll get them, it's fine. Okay, um, let's go to Cronley. So we're going to be working our way through his little hideout here. There's a devotion point, there's a rover's quest, there's a whole bunch of idiots to blow up, which is always fun. Now, money bags here is going to be a little more painful, shall we say, than he normally is. Uh, especially if you've got people like this running around shooting guns at you while you're trying to kite him. So it's going to take a few hits to get rid of him, or you can hit him once and run around and, I mean, honestly, I could be kiting him down into the pit. There we go. He's going to drop dynamite pretty much every time you kill him. I'm also pretty sure I want those, uh, that hat. And he's dropped a ton of MIs, actually. Okay, adept gloves, 125 armor. Meh. No. Um, right, what did he drop? That's some nice resistances on those gloves. Armor downgrade, though. And then the shoulders, we've got Chaos to Fire, we don't care about. Fire and Aether damage, we don't care about. Aether and Chaos resistance, we do care about, but not really just yet. And that's a slight downgrade in armor. So if you get a really good pair of these, you can use them. Same with the Ascended ones. Um, and same with the Helmet. That's actually a pretty good helmet. Six extra armor, more cunning, more spirit. I would lose health, but that's actually, that that's really good. I'm going to hang on to that one. And yeah, once you start getting the, uh, the green boys show up, they have shoulders and helmets that are also good to keep. You probably want to keep one of each of them if you can. Because you'll be needing them for Chaos Resistance later. Actually, speaking of that, it's probably not a bad idea to go kill Milton again. For his helmet. What do we got here? Balraza. Eternal Servant of Dreek. Well, I am also the Eternal Servant of Dreek. Or at least, you know... Until I can beat him in a fight, then he can be my servant. But maybe, maybe you should have been my friend. Right, new devotion point. So that's going to go straight into the Sailor's Guide here. Bit of physique, bit of defensive ability. Nothing amazing, but it's on the path to getting Mistress of Rumors here, Murma. And this proc is one that I want to get leveling as soon as possible. Same with the Acid Spray as well. Uh, these two are our resistance reduction, and I want to get them leveling as soon as I can. And no, we're not using that. Okay, we're starting to get Priests, which, I mean, definitely don't love that. <laughs> Anyone who's been watching for a while knows that I don't like Priests. Only in the game. I've I don't think I've ever met one in the real world. But I hear they have a little bit of a shady reputation in the real world as well. Uh, make sure you're blowing up anyone with a red hat, anyone with a green hat, so... Actually, there's no green hats here. We're gonna kill him anyway. So Merrick the Aether Touched is already dead, he just doesn't know it yet. There he goes. 
What do we got here? Uh, plus two to second right is this one. This one. <laughs> so that's not very good. Those pants will uh, make a nice pile of coins or iron bits. You can sometimes get heroes down here. Uh, this, this is one of the spawn locations for one of the bounties. So if you have a bounty for Devil's Crossing, there's a good chance it could be there. Also, oh, it's back here. I'm not going to go back for it. There's, there's a, a bashable wall there with some loot behind it. Have you got a hat for me? Nope. What was that? It said here. That'll do, I guess. Okay, when you get to this point here, if you didn't fight Dereni back in Devil's Crossing, he will be here, and you'll have to fight him to open this door. Um, I did fight him in Devil's Crossing, so I don't need to kill him to get through the door. But it does mean I miss out on a bit of loot. Pretty much any of the, uh, the trash heaps in this area, or any of the mines, can drop you dynamite, so definitely worth hitting those. Uh, Vigorous of Protection, eh, it's a bit of Aether Res, I may use that. Maybe. Also at this point, if you don't have enough Royal Jelly for that quest, you can come here. And you may get some through this little section here. It's level 23. This is just an absolute mess. <laughs> this game does not know how to play inventory Jenga. Well, it's... I mean, it's an improvement. Alright, no more royal jelly for me, which is, you know, a little bit sad. You used to think for the longest time that there was something up there, some sort of secret. There's got to be a reason you can walk in there, right? No, there's nothing there. Okay, all these guys with the funky green shoulders and hats, they've all got to go. And you four, just because you annoyed me. Uh, don't forget to come and grab your free dynamite. Actually, it's over there, I think. So I'm up to... Where's my dynamite? I'm up to nine dynamite. Can't believe these guys are shooting me with that much dynamite. I'd be more worried about the place blowing up. Alright, let's see if I can't get these guys grouped up nicely. Everybody run over here. Grouping all these guys up like this was way more effort than it was worth. Killing them all in one hit though is, is always fun. Um, let's do this one. I'm going to regret this later when I have to farm a million of these things, but for right now, it's kind of okay. Okay, we've got the poopy pants. So you can throw poo at things. Uh, this is just a worse Dreg's Evil Eye, so I'm going to pick it up and sell it. And the Bloodbound Ointment is really good. This is, this is actually a really good drop. Um, I don't have any Chthonic Seals of Binding, and I'd be tempted to not spend them on making this because uh, Isaiah Redden exists, but that is a really good drop. The only other one I really care about is the Aether Potion, which again, Isaiah Redden exists, so I'm not hugely worried about it. Um, the Aether one and the Vitality ones are both really good to have. Give me your hats. I mean, that's a book, but I'll take it. Um, what do we got in that? Cold stuff? Elemental stuff. Yeah, cool. Alright, um, next level. I'm going to take one point in Aspect of the Guardian here. This is a little bit of physical resistance. Poison and acid res I don't really need. Um, but... Everything on there is kind of good, but not amazing. 
and from there we're just going to push up to vile eruption probably put a few more points into terrifying gaze and um and push for possession there okay for crunley you want aether resistance for this so if you have a helmet or a pair of shoulders or something that has some aether res on it maybe you've got a ring with some aether res um consider putting it on uh what i'm gonna do is very very risky um very risky actually remind me not to clear my rift okay if if i if i open a rift gate up and i have to run through cronley's lair again with no monsters to fight in there i'm gonna be quite upset so you know don't let me do that i'm gonna blame you when it happens too These guys uh, will actually still drop loot, so I'm going to go back to that other guy. Where are you? You there. Okay. He just didn't want to drop loot. That's fine. Um, not that way. I want to kill Milton. Because Milton has a really nice hat, and I think there's a level 22 version that he should drop when I kill him. Of course, he's not home right now. Let's see if he's down here. He is not. So he's going to be over here. Yep, there he is. Alright, so I'm just going to kill him. Uh, he has dropped me level 12 again, but it does have a decent chunk of Aether resistance on it. So it's probably not a bad thing to do. Um, ooh, no. No. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You did a great job. You didn't let me do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to swap that in because my current helmet gives me basically nothing that's really good for fighting um, friendly. If you don't have good Aether resistance, you just have to be really careful not to stand in the goop he's going to put on the floor. Uh, but do check if you have belts, if you have, you know, these pants. I kind of want to keep my um, components. These shoulders could use. I do. There we go. I didn't actually need to go kill Milton. I could have just used this helmet. Um, but yeah, get some, get some Aether resistance if you can. Don't stress about it, though. 30-40% something like that that's more than enough so I'm just gonna do that the first time you fight him take your time um, he wants to talk to you so you can you can pretty much just run around do whatever you like you can't open this up but you can't go in there either so pretty much you just kill those two and then you can talk to him um, you throw one at him and then he's gonna put his shield up but he'll keep ticking down behind that. There we go. You saw I was standing in the goop there. Which means uh, I was taking a lot of damage. But with this build, a lot of the damage you do is just damage over time. So just, you know, throw an eyeball at him and then run around a bit. Three and a half thousand damage every time it ticks on him. Is pretty good. Ah, he's put his shield up. That's unfortunate. 90% damage reduction on that shield. And we're not playing a warlock, so I can't dispel it. But that's fine. He's gonna die eventually. That should be it. There he goes. Alright, and that's that's the boss fight. That is actually how just about every boss fight goes for this build. You curse them, you use any kind of damage buffs you have, you snapshot a huge amount of bonus damage, and then you just kind of lob things at them until they explode. Um, I think I'm going to go back to that one. Now, currently Signet does come with pierce resistance doesn't normally have that much usually it's sort of 15 to 20 percent at this level 
Uh, but that's a lot of piercing resistance, and this one also comes with elemental. So the impenetrable prefix there is going to be piercerers, and uh, the rest of that's decent but not amazing, is how I would describe that ring. Yeah. Don't forget Darius's chest here. You may get something good out of this. Unlikely, as always. Can you actually not carry any more? Or are you just really bad at inventory Jenga? Yeah, that's what I thought. Ah, uh, when you come in here, don't forget to bash the cabinet at the back. You can get some XP out of that. Um, where is my law notes that I just picked up? There we go. And here, you want to keep some crystal for yourself because that is going to give you one Aether Cluster. If you take the other option, you get uh, you get some nice stuff as well. So you would get an Aether Resistance, uh, Aether Soul, uh, maybe even two, and, uh, and a few other components and such, which are definitely nice to have. Now, I like to have my Aether Cluster and my Dynamite in these bottom four corners, so that's what I'm going to do does not matter at all where you have them, but just make sure you have one. Also, I like to have Aether Cluster on button 7. Uh, no idea why, actually. I think the first time I made a character where it mattered, I just had it on 7 because I had other stuff on 1 through 6, and it's just kind of stuck that 7 is my panic button. Same as 4 is the, uh, the place where I put all of the healing stuff, so if I have Blood of it goes there. If I have Word of Renewal, it goes there. If I have uh, Pneumatic Burst, it goes there. Anything with a heal that I want to push fairly regularly goes there. Um, also, make sure when you kill Darius Cronley, you do step out the back door. Come over here and get this Rift Gate, because if you don't, and you have to go to the shops, or you have to go to the toilet, or there's power outage, some other reason you have to leave, then you get to run through Darius Cronley's lair all over again. And you've already killed everything, so good luck with that. Right, let's go do a bunch of turn-ins here. Before I do that, let's go right back to where I just came from. Just to the left, over here, is... These two idiots. Now, you can talk to these guys, um, and you can kill them, but uh, if you bribe them and then tell them about the prison, then uh, then they'll go back to the prison. And you'll have a few extra bodies there. Uh, right, speaking of the prison, let's go back there ourselves, because we have a few quests to turn in. Just checking if Barnabas wants to talk. He doesn't care about us at the moment. Um... This is those two we just found, I believe. But uh, they'll be in the town somewhere. There we go, there's another level, level 24. I am tempted to put another point in here, and I think I'm going to. Um, Aspect of the Guardian is really, really powerful because of the physical resistance. Now, if you're watching this too far into the future, um, it may have been rebalanced away from that. But for now, at least, it is really good, and it's entirely down to those resistances. Okay, let's get rid of well, pretty much everything here. Don't think there was anything there that I wanted to keep. Um, which tells me that there wasn't, because if there was, I would remember. He said, knowing that was completely not true. <laughs> okay, once we're into Act 2, um, there's five mutagenic eye cores as well, so I'm going to go get my second vitriolic goldstone. Uh, Vitter. There we go. There's another aura for me. Uh, once you get into Act 2, you can start looking for Mark of the Traveler to go in your boots. Um, you can start looking for these things here, Unholy Inscription. These are good to have on your gloves. Um, bleeding and Vitality Res are usually 
two that are kind of a little bit low. You can start looking for soul shards to go on your rings. These are little uh, pink crystals. They're good to have as well. And um, I think that's something for every slot at this point. Can also... Uh, I want to hang on to three of those to turn the quest in. Put that in there. We'll chuck that in there. Those three are good for elite. And I'm going to hang on to that helmet. Okay. Did indeed spend all my devo devotion points. Okay, talking to Barnabas there, I believe he's just going to tell us some stuff that doesn't matter. So we can leave him for now until we get to Homestead. We do have to go back to Old Arcovia though, because we have some quests to turn in. Um, found some texts. Thank you very much. Goodbye. There's friendly with the rovers. You have men injured. Can I help? Is this enough royal jelly? Thank you for the potion. And also, we get some little regen potions, which are decent, but not amazing. Okay, and we've done all of your quests as well. Now, at this point, we've only got very basic stuff here. Um, can't even use any of this stuff, but... Once we get up to um, uh, Respected, we'll have access to these. There's some pretty good components in here that you can buy blueprints for. Um, Ventral Wraith here, we'll be needing that going into Elite or Ultimate, depending on which way we go, um, for Devotion Shrine. Runestone is decent in your head early on, so definitely things to buy. Restless Remains are... Also pretty good in your gloves if you're doing casting, if you're doing, well, pretty much anything. They're a good option. Okay. With that said, uh, this seems like a good place to end this episode. So thank you all very much for watching episode number three. Come back next time for episode number four. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.